So, Lori, here's the map of western Washington and even Canada because the subduction zone, which runs out here, is what's going to drive the quake and drive the tsunami. Now, people on the coast are going to be in trouble. We showed you last week how they're developing a second uh, tsunami evacuation tower down at the Shoalwater Nation. But the question is, is how far back are these two plates locked? Is it this far where it was thought that the that the shaking here in the major population centers, Vancouver to Portland, including ourselves, would be bad, but not that bad? Or is the lock zone further out here? When it comes to big earthquakes and tsunamis, we have a lot in common with Japan. Only Japan was hit with earthquake violence as recently as 2011. We're still waiting after 317 years. We have something else in common, what's called silent or slow slip earthquakes, also called deep tremor. And the one just wrapping up started back in April. They can take weeks to months to unfold from Canada to Northern California, but nobody notices because nothing shakes at the surface. Just before Christmas, we had tremor in southern Vancouver Island. UW seismologist Ken Krager walked us through one in early 2016. We're seeing a lot more details about how these events unfold. 20 years ago, we didn't even know these kinds of quakes existed until they were first discovered in Japan, then found here. But Krager says science learns something every time they're recorded. Uh, tremor from December 23rd. How does this work? I've been showing you this graphic of how the ocean plate and the North American plate are locked together and once released create not only a tsunami but a really big earthquake. The question is, how locked together are these plates? Past assumptions may be falling away and the reality could be that the lock zone is far larger than first thought. But how to figure out how big the lock zone is may tie to the tremor itself. Where we detect tremor with all those dots, the plates are slipping past each other harmlessly deep inside the earth. Krager says where there is no tremor to the west may indicate just how big the lock zone is and where it starts. This is something that um, has been discussed in the past, um, but is worth um, revisiting and rethinking. I caught up with Ken Krager today on the phone. We have a number of ways of estimating where it is, and they... Aren't, they don't all give the same answer. So this is one of several possibilities, and I wouldn't necessarily say it's the most likely one. Now, more research is needed, and one of the people at the University of Washington, the university is hired, and due to start here in the fall, is Harold Tobin, considered a top expert in subduction zones, currently doing hmm. research work in Japan. So, Glenn, could there be another explanation, perhaps, on the size of this lock that's, zone? That's what they're trying to figure out. you got to remember, we can't just go down there in an elevator, poke around, turn on a flashlight, and go, oh, yeah, here's the fault. Mm -hmm. It doesn't work that way. Yeah. So what these silent earthquakes do, in a way, is give us a research tool in helping sort of define those things. So Krager says maybe that's it. He says it's unlikely to be that, it could be something else, but this is the kind of stuff they need to, to worry about, to, for example, to set building codes in Seattle in this part of the state. All right. Glenn, thanks.